Ah, gaming on Linux has come a far way. Linux as a gaming platform has a lot of potential. And compatibility layers like Proton by Steam or applications like Lutris make it even possible to run Windows games. That being said though, Linux still suffers from many issues in that area. Of course, not every game works under Linux yet, and those who do are not always perfect. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video, where we are going to take a look at how Linux gaming compares to Windows and what you can do to further improve performance. Alright, let's start off with some basics and some numbers to get an idea on how Linux compares to Windows, which is still the number one choice for gamers, let's be real. Now, as I mentioned before, Linux has come a long way. Just a couple of years ago, most PC games just wouldn't run at all, but thanks to compatibility layers like Wine and Proton, as well as the release of the Steam Deck, things started to shift a little. But let's see if Linux is actually capable of providing a solid gaming experience. For this, I've tested five games, those being CSGO, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which both have a native Linux version, Witcher 3, run with the latest version of Proton, as well as GTA 5 and Far Cry 5, both install and run through Lutris. My testing bench consists of my current PC, which is dual booting Windows 11, and Fedora 36 with GNOME 42.2, a Ryzen 5 5600X, 16GB of 2400MHz DDR4 RAM, and a GTX 1080. Now I should mention at this point that I didn't want to use any third-party software that could interfere with some frame times. So we're just going to rely on in-game benchmarks here. And these are the results. What you see here is the average FPS value from 10 runs of the FPS benchmark downloaded from the workshop. And as you can see here, it doesn't really matter if you play CSGO on Windows or on Linux. But I should mention that it felt a lot more stuttery on Linux. Next up is the Far Cry 5 benchmark with Lutris on max settings. Now, even though it seems that the min and max FPS are basically the same, the average was still 8 FPS slower. And this was consistent across all of the tests. Now, if you were to lower the graphics settings, then this gap between Windows and Linux gets wider. On my personal system, Far Cry 5 just runs slower than on Windows. And the same applies for Witcher 3, run for the latest version of Proton 7. Witcher 3 in particular seems to run a lot worse than the Windows version. Which is interesting if you think about that it has a platinum rating on ProtonDB. Next up is GTA 5, which basically runs exactly the same like the Windows version. Except there are some dips when a new scene is loading. And that causes the FPS to dip down to 63 FPS. But that being said, this is probably just related to the benchmark and the whole loading of the scene and not really in the gameplay. But I think it should be fair that Windows does not have these problems apparently. Last but not least, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is also compatible with Linux natively. Now this is a very interesting one in my opinion, because on Linux the performance is worse. It's not that much worse, but it is still worth mentioning. And not gonna lie, I actually expected Shadow of the Tomb Raider to run better on Linux. Simply because it has a native version and it is on a more lightweight system. But this benchmark shows that this is not 100% possible and DirectX has a massive advantage here. I also tried to run this game through Proton on the DX12 mode as well as on the DX11 mode. And as you can see here, the DirectX 11 mode performed slightly better than the DirectX 12 version. DirectX 12 on Linux is still problematic. And that is not good for newer games and it still needs a lot of work. So it seems like Linux in general performs slightly worse than Windows. But why? What's hidden behind those results? The general performance loss could be explained by the translation processes going on in the Proton layer or Lutris runtime. But I think there is more to it than just this. Because it wouldn't explain why Shadow of the Tomb Raider performs slightly worse than Windows. Based on the results and my hardware, I think that most of the problems are related to the Nvidia driver. Simply because CSGO, a more CPU bound game, performed identically. But that being said though, even if a game manages to achieve the same FPS results than on Windows, it doesn't necessarily feel the same. For example, CSGO on Linux feels a lot more stuttery, almost like you're missing FPS. 
which according to the benchmark is not happening. So there are a lot of bad frame timings going on. And as I said before, I believe that this is due to a driver issue. All right, so that's that. But can we actually get the performance to the same level as in Windows or go even beyond? Well, I tried hard. There are many different tools and tweaks that you can do to improve gaming performance. The first one would be the Feral Game Mode. This awesome tool allows for custom kernel improvements as well as other tweaks like overclocking and NVIDIA GPU. At least in theory. In practice and on my specific system, it didn't make any difference. Like literally nothing. I looked up if it was running and yes, it did, but it just didn't improve anything. I believe that the feral game mode had much more impact on older kernels. You shouldn't forget that the Linux kernel has received a lot of updates since this tool released. And since then, it has gotten a ton of gaming related features, which could explain the performance. The second thing I tried was to install a custom gaming kernel called XanMod. Like the game mode, it features some tuning capabilities on kernel bases, but it also didn't result in an increase. Well, that's going well so far. But what about Xorg versus Wayland? Doesn't make a difference because typical games are run with X Wayland, so the comparison would be Xorg versus Xorg. Esync versus Fsync. Well, that one can actually increase your FPS. Fsync is typically faster than Esync and should work on newer kernels right out of the box. The thing with Fsync though is that it is not really compatible with everything yet. And by that I don't mean games. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you've installed a game like Far Cry with Lutris, then you automatically get the Ubisoft game launcher as well. Now if an update for the launcher comes along, then you're stuck in an endless loop and the game does not start. In order to fix that issue, you need to disable Fsync and the update goes through. After that you should enable it again though, since the game performs slightly worse on Esync. It does work and it even increases your FPS, but it can break the launcher, so be aware of that. NVIDIA settings. Oh no 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 no. Well, NVIDIA, listen up. The first thing I want you to do is to improve the settings panel so I can make a fair comparison between Windows and Linux. Second, it does not matter if you enable or disable any settings in the OpenGL panel. Like literally. Some games don't use OpenGL, but Vulkan is their DirectX substitute and these settings don't apply. And for the game it does, I didn't find any improvements. So either these settings don't work at all or because of the hardware performance nowadays it simply doesn't matter. But I still wouldn't recommend you to turn off sync to blank and allow flipping since it helps with screen tearing and has literally no impact on performance. At least on my personal system. Okay, so. Lastly, the desktop environment. Quick disclaimer, I didn't have time to test this, but you can get slight improvements out of using a lighter desktop environment. I'm leaving a link in the video description below where you can find more. But that being said though, don't get your hopes up too high because based on the results so far, I don't think that it really makes a huge difference. But hey, maybe it does not your system. So in conclusion, how can you optimize gaming performance on Linux? The truth is that without going really deep into the operating system itself, there's really not much you can do. But this is not necessarily a bad thing, since it means that all of the tweaks that were previously necessary are already implemented in the Linux kernels or the operating system itself. Just be aware if you have an Nvidia GPU, especially an older one like my GTX 1080, you might run into some problems that you wouldn't on AMD. And yeah, that's it. So if you've liked this video, then make sure to show it with a like and even a sub. I believe that this video might also be interesting for you. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are. I'll see you around.